good evening everybody uh, let me know if you have any questions otherwise uh, we'll start with today's class um, earlier in the previous class we were talking about uh, functions there are lots of um, built-in functions uh, in Oracle and uh, they can be used for doing a uh, lot of uh, mathematics or let's say financial calculations or you can also do the date related uh, calculations like we we saw one of the example is like say what is the last day of a given date and it tells you what is the last day of the month of the given date um, these are very useful uh, in terms of let's say you are calculating a loan end date uh, certain things like that and also i told you about uh, there is a date function sys date uh, let's say for example select sys date from dual will tell you what is the current date on the server and basically you can see here the date is 27th january 2016 uh, here it's it shows 27-jan-16 or 16 here um, and I told you it also has time embedded inside. Um, what we'll take uh, take a look at today is how would we figure out uh, how to change the formats and uh, you know show different formats of date um, and other functionality. So what we are going to talk about today is called conversion functions. These are also very important in terms of like you know you should be able to convert a number into a character or a character into a date or a date into a character. So first let's uh, just start with, let's say, how would we see other information stored inside this date? So let's just say, for example, says date comma, all I want to do is to see the 2016 instead of just 16. So if I want to do that, what you do is to care, you're going to convert this sys date <clears throat> into some format. Okay, now to care function is a conversion function. What it is doing is it is taking a date uh, date value and converting it to character format and you have to specify what format you want it to display. So here let's say for example, I want it to show four wise that is for the year and let's say I want to show MON for month, three letters for month and I want to show the DD. DD is, is for date or the day. Um, so let me just run this first. I want to show you how the formatting works. What we are doing with the uh, to care function is this is the function. This is the input. Input should be a date. So sysdate is a date, uh, which tells you what is the current date on the server. And then there is a formatting, which is provided as a character data type. And what is the format here is I'm using four wise, then a dash, and MON is a uh, as a three letter month, which is like a J and Jan, and the two digit date, uh, which is like current date or today's date. So when I run this, you can see the output. Output is formatted in a different way, but now we are able to format it to whatever we need. Um, Say, for example, you have this data stored uh, in the default format. You want to change the format for, like, say, you're taking this data using Informatica. You're going to load this data into MySQL. MySQL has a different date format, so you can do that formatting here. Or let's say you are loading it into SQL Server. SQL Server has a different date format, so you can do that kind of formatting using this to care conversion. Why is it called conversion function is because it is converting a date into a character data type and you are specifying a format of what you want. So let's look at other options we have here. Um, you can, okay, you can simply say, let me just start with uh, like four wise. This is, this is one of the format I just showed. Like say, if you just want to know the year, so you just run it and it tells you, you always look at the second column. That's what we are going to tweak with uh, for rest of the uh, two care functionality. Now let's say you, sh you want to show only three digits of the year. You can see what happens is the two is dropped. Okay, so zero one six is, is what is displayed. 
and for certain functionality you might want to use it that way like so 16 when it is two y's and if you do a single y it will be like six okay so that is what you do with the year now let's say for example you want to uh, have you want to show like say for example year okay and if you run this it shows 2016 as the year okay so this is this is one way to display the year uh, totally now let me also show you there is an example of MON is the default for the month and you can see here Jan is the month and what you can do is you can do a month like complete name and it will show you January. There is an interesting way to show the month uh, in an init cap format. If you do a small letters here MONTH M capital what it will do is it will put it in the init cap format and also let's try the small m and let's see what happens if you do that small m is everything in small letters okay so this is very powerful in the sense it can do a lot of things with single function uh, you can also get the number of the month by just doing mm like that and it tells you 0 1 instead of uh, showing you it as jan or january or anything else it's just showing you number for the month um, <clears throat> you can do DD is <coughs> is the day or in the month. Okay, so let me show you. Today is the 27th day in this month. If you do a triple D, it shows you what is the day out of 365 days in the year. What is the day today? So because we are in the first month, it is showing 27. But play with this formats. Okay, so there is one more thing called day, like full day like this and it shows you what is the day today today is Wednesday okay now again uh, I don't need to remind you that you can do a day like this and it will show you a mixed case of uh, day and you you should play with all these uh, along with okay <coughs> so let's let's start putting it in a format let's let's say what is the day today okay and what is the dd which is the day of the month and let's say month month complete month and then four y's okay so this is the format you want to show your date okay this is how you want to display now you see the spaces here that is just formatting issue okay um if you if you just uh, ignore that for now let's just uh, do a mon because we don't want to bother about uh, the uh, Okay, so let's just do a Wednesday 27th January 2016. That is the format we are displaying. Now what I want to show you is so far we are only looking at the date portion of the date. As I told you, sys date contains time also. So inside it has time. So let's do the time portion and here we can do a 12 hour format or a 24 hour format by doing HH24. You get a 24 hour format. So let's just do the 12 hour format first. How do you write your time? Is our minute MI stands for minutes and SS stands for seconds. So let's just run this first. I want to show you that it picks my time. My clock time here is 7 52 32 seconds. And let's say if I don't bother to get the seconds, I just remove that. What you can do is here you can write something called AM <clears throat> and it will tell you whether it is AM or a PM. Okay. So here, see, even though you write AM or PM, it just shows you what is the current uh, time or you don't worry about AM or PM. You just do, let's say for example, sorry, you just do 24 here. It shows you 24 hour clock format. The 1953 is the time right now okay and these are some of the time functions now you can also do more formatting let me show you some more formatting here let's go back to 12 hour format for time and let's do am and which is going to show you this output what i want to show you is <coughs> this day thing i want to say this is a 27th day okay this is this is 27 right instead of just doing dd i would say th ddth and it will show you 
27th like this okay and also this this th if you want um so so obviously you see here wednesday 27th of jan 2016 is how it is displaying you can do a small letter dd and see if, if it changes anything and you can see now it is 27th january okay january you can you can write it this way month month and obviously it will show you the full full month here january and 2016 okay now <clears throat> <laughs> you can use certain things like say farm comma is one more thing you can use and it will just show you the comma after wherever the, uh, the letter is uh, you can also do three letter for the month okay so like that so wednesday 27th january comma 2016 and for time you can let's say for example you can do time can be done like this by putting a slash so here you are just replacing that character here instead of colon you are showing a um, or you can show a dash dash we know that it works earlier with the date you can show a date uh, i mean time generally time is displayed with a colon like that so you can do all that formatting okay so this is this is very powerful in the sense uh, you can convert the date into several formats you can add like seconds here ss is one more thing you can add and then obviously it shows you the full format now if you are displaying it on your website probably you will run this way and instead of showing it this way you want to show the full detail and this is how you can do the formatting so two care of date is very powerful in the sense this small function has so many inputs you can choose from formatting uh, you can look at the Oracle documentation to find out what else is available. I covered most of it, but you have to remember some of these. Like, so you can play with these things, and you can figure out how to how to you know get different outputs for the date. So what you can do with this is instead of uh, just here, let's say uh, select star from EMP. And what you do is there is a column called higher date. Okay, so you can apply the exact same thing for the higher date. Let's say e name, comma higher date will show you whatever is in the table, right? Exactly whatever is stored in the table. But let's say if you want to format the higher date into like the formatting we looked at earlier. So let's say for example copy that paste it here. Instead of sys date, I will say higher date and obviously from emp table so now what will happen is you see this nice formatting for all of your dates <coughs> and then you can you can play with uh, like the formatting here okay and also the other thing i want to just uh, show you here the th portion of it you can see when it is 17th it said 17th but when it is first it says st and also second is nd and all that so it, it automatically knows that uh, is it the first second or third or 17th 18th 19th something like that so it's a, it's a very interesting way to use that th uh, it it gives a proper uh, readable uh, format okay so um also there is a d single d i want to show you what is the d let's see if i can explain what is the d um so you can see here tuesday is third day of the week uh, because the week starts with uh, sunday monday tuesday third day friday is the sixth day of the week and then thursday is fifth day of the week saturday is seventh day of the week okay so this this single output here is caused by the single d here and it tells you which day of the week it is this is day of the month and then you have the three Ds like this, which is the day of the year. So here you can you can see this is the, let's say uh, you are talking about 17th November 1981 is the 321st day of the year. So these are very powerful function uh, inputs like formats you can use. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise what we'll do is, 
right now we talked about how to convert a date into into character and also show different formats we would like to get the details in so what we'll do now is let's uh, play with a little bit of numbers okay so let's say you have some numbers okay uh, we have um, let's go to the employee table and we have salary e name and salary and let's say <coughs> show this output <coughs> now what you want to format the salary is you want to show it in a different format let's say for example you want to say to care convert the salary into a given format okay now what is the given format let's say for example you want to have five nines like that and two decimal points to show um now nine each nine represents a uh, integer or an integer place and you are telling the format should be five nines dot two nines okay so now you see the formatting is done according to what you provided here and also you see the 950 uh, is is just displayed as 950.00 but let's say for example you want to fill um, okay so first of all what we did here is we are telling convert the salary into this format and display the output you can also put a zero in the front and say you want five nines but if there are not there are no five digits then fill it with zeros in the front you can do that by doing a zero and you can see the output now always has five digits so 950 is displayed as 00950.00 so let's say you are writing a check you want to write it this way this is more secure nobody can change it to like say when you write 950 nobody can change it to 1950 or 2950 so you can do this kind of formatting and let me also show you because we in us we write it this way let's say you want to write uh, 99 comma 999 comma 99 <coughs> then you can do that by just putting a comma it basically puts it for the display it makes it look like this it looks uh, looks at a different format um, in the financial sector you might want more de decimals you can do that you can also put a dollar sign in front of it to to show the dollar amount and you can see see it adds a dollar amount dollar sign in the front by putting a dollar sign um, you can do let's say for example mi and it will show you a minus symbol Hold on. What happened here is two care is the two number valid. My is the okay. My is not recognized. I don't know why. It used to be recognized. Probably I'm not using it in a right way. So so ignore that. Uh, there is one more called Rn. I, I don't know what that is. But okay. So you know what? Anyway, what we know here is you can put it in this format. Let's say for example you want three nines and then comma. You let's say three nines. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> By doing this, you can format it in in whatever you, way you want. Uh, by putting it in a sub specific format, and you can put a dollar dollar sign will show you extra dollar sign in the front, and also it uh, it doesn't allow spaces, so just put like this, and it shows a dollar amount. Now these are uh, some of the functions too convert a number into character but while converting it also applies some formatting to the number so you can get the proper formatting let's say for example i'll change this to nine again and you can see uh, let's say i want to change the decimals to four nines and then you can see whatever format you specified here because it's all zeros it doesn't matter but still it is showing you the format you're asking for um, so this is how you can get input I mean output uh, for a number change to a proper format. Okay. Now let's say you are doing a load from some other database. Okay. Let's uh, let's talk about converting a date. Um, now let's say a scenario is you are getting a date from some other system, and that date format is uh, 2015 and uh, january is written as let's let me take uh, this because uh, this is how your um, 
uh, your SQL server is written. Let's say, for example, this is five and this is, I will say six. Now here, the confusion is you don't know whether this is month or date. Okay, you don't know that. Um, but when you do this, select, uh, you can see this is displayed as character data type. But let's say if you want to convert it to your Oracle's date format, because you cannot do math on this, like you cannot say plus 10. Okay, yesterday we did a lot of math on dates, and here it is going to give you error because it thinks this is character, and there, then you are adding something to it. So it's a wrong formatting. First of all, you have to convert this to a valid date, and then you can do some math on the dates. So in this case, you need to you you see that this is this is particularly a date written in character format, and it is coming from some database. So where you what you can do is you can say to date, and then what you have to do is you have to tell what is the format I'm providing this date in, right? You saw the formatting earlier, so you know that it is four wise. Da, I mean with a with a slash. Now you decide whether this is a date or a month. So let's say for example in the other database this is month. The second uh, input is month. Okay. So you say mm and you are saying zero. Uh, sorry, dd is the last portion. Okay. So now first of all let's let's run this and see what happens. It shows output in Oracle date format. Now it is in dd mon yy format okay so this is got this got converted to a date properly within oracle and also notice that 05 is the month which is mapping to may now earlier when you when you just said 0506 it is confusing which one is date and which one is month but because you specified a specific format now it knows now let's say i add 10 now uh, to do the math on the dates, it will be able to do it because now this particular thing gets converted to date and because it's a valid date, now you can add 10 to it. By uh, doing that, you can do some math with the dates. Like, um, you know, you can apply other functions like what is the last day of this and all that stuff, okay? <coughs> now let's say, for example, uh, this this was one example where you're getting a date from some database and you want to do some conversions and you are converting it to the proper date format here. So same way, let's say for example, in the other database you have written 99 comma, um, sorry, let, let me just type some numbers and then say so this is like financial system. So we have like four or five digits of decimals and also you you can write some commas here. Let's say, we are getting this from India. You know that India has uh, formatting which is done in two numbers like this. Okay, so like uh, right now, I think I wrote um, three lakh something. Okay, and uh, let's just for easiness sake, there are only two decimals. Now, if you select this, it looks like a number for us. Uh, but when you are converting this to American format, you might need commas in a different place, and also this is particularly character data type right now. If you do a plus 10, it will not be able to do it properly because this is not a valid number. So you might have to convert that to a valid number first. So there are there is that reason of conversion because right now it is a character data type. You can say to number, okay? And what is the format? Obviously you have to specify the format. Now this is not a standard US way of formatting. So you will say 9 comma 99 comma 99 comma 99 dot 99. That is the format, right? That is the format you provided the input. Now this became a proper number. <coughs> that means now I can do some math on it by adding some 10 numbers. So here you can see the last two digits are like 92. I'm going to add 10 and it becomes something else because I added 10 numbers it increased. But what I'm trying to show you here is, initially I provided a character data type and I'm asking it to convert to a number and I'm providing what is the format I provided in and then obviously it became a proper number. Now, I want to show you how, how you can make some more complications to this is, you can then put this whole thing into a two care function, okay? 
now what i'm doing is whatever output is i want to convert it into us format i'm providing the i'm providing the indian format and then i want to convert it to like say us format and us format is 999 comma and let me say i will put a dollar sign um, and also here 999 comma 999 dot 99 okay maybe decimals i want to increase to four digits so now what happens is you you first of all take a character data type you convert it to a proper number and then you do some math and whatever the output number is you want to convert it back to character and display it in this format okay so this is this is like you're doing uh, certain things back and forth and you're converting the numbers to proper format whatever you want to show or maybe you want to store this in your database here uh, in oracle properly okay <coughs> so this is some of the examples of using uh, two char functions so you are basically converting the existing formats you are changing them from one to the other um so we talked about uh, four four different conversion functions we took a date and converted it to char and also we converted a number into a char Uh, so by using two date and two char functions, and also let's say we we took a date and con uh, we took a character and converted it to date by doing two date, and then we took a character which is number and we converted it to two number by using this two number function. So these are couple of um, couple of um, data type conversion functions. So these are these are really interesting and very useful. Um, let's look at uh, something called group functions so i want to talk about group functions in the sense let's do a e name comma salary okay this is this is the easiest demo we can do with the salary okay now here i want to know what is the maximum salary what is the minimum salary what is the sum average count certain things and also just to have some fun let's add dept no in this and what what i want to know is first of all i want to know which salary is the maximum salary minimum salary and all that okay so max sal is the function now what i okay the, let me explain something before we go to the group functions i want to explain something let's say for example um, let's do something with the e name we'll just say lower of e name <coughs> so we did this character functions yesterday like the string functions what you can do is you can take input convert it to some other format by here i'm just doing the lower case of the name now what you see here is it takes one input and it throws out one output one input one output one input one output that is what happens when you when you do any regular functions okay regular functions are not acting on a group of rows but now we are going to talk about group functions let's say for example salary column if you just select salary column it looks like this but let's say if you do max of salary then what happens is there are 15 rows in our table and when i do a max of salary it is going to take all 15 rows and find out what is the maximum value okay and you can see it provides only one value out now these are called group functions okay uh, let me explain what group functions do they basically take multiple row input and convert it to one row output because they act on a group of rows okay so here you can see max salary min salary is one more thing and then let's say what is the average salary avg salary and let's say what is the total sum of the salary sum of the salaries okay all the salaries and then let me count how many salaries we are actually talking about let's say sal okay like that now <coughs> when i run this, when i run this you can see certain things come out here is first of all what is the maximum salary and minimum salary this is easy to explain like there are 15 rows what is the max and what is the min what is the average salary and you can see it is putting like a high decimal values 
meaning high accuracy for the numbers. And you can see Oracle basically handles the whole thing as simple number. And this is the total salaries every month we pay to the all the employees in the organization. And there are 15 salaries we pay out. Okay, so you can see the count of uh, 15. Now you can also do a count of commission. I want to explain how this works. So let's look at this. And you can see we pay only commission to five people. Okay. Uh, I, what I want to do is I will just do a select star from select star from EMP just to show you data. Okay. So first of all, we this is the total salary we pay to all employees. This is the number of salaries we pay out, and this is the number of commissions we pay out. Now, if you look at the data. What I want to explain is there are 15 entries in the salary column, whereas in the commission column, there are one, two, one, two, three entries here, and then there is a fourth and a fifth. So it did not count the nulls. So that's how you got five for the count of commission. Remember that. Okay. Now, let me introduce something here called whenever you're using this group functions, there is an interesting thing happening in the background. Let's say, for example, I want to introduce something called where clause. Okay, we looked at some where clauses, like how do you filter where? Let's say, for example, I want to say department number is 10. I want I want to get all the departments, uh, all the entries of department number 10, and tell me only for department number 10 what is the max, min, average, sum, count, and count of commission. Okay, that is easy. Now, you can see that we are not paying uh, any commission to people in department number 10. Okay, But you want to know for each department. Here you are doing a specific department 10. But let's say, for example, if you want all departments, then all you do is DEPT NO here as a first column. And now what will happen is your output should show all departments. But this is going to show you an error. Actually, if you notice, um, if you notice your uh, SQL developer already puts a yellow line under the under this whole thing, and if you hover here, it tells you that select list is inconsistent with group by function. Amend group by class to department number. Okay, so it basically is giving you a hint of what could be wrong. Okay, now what is wrong here is first of all. If you did not have department number there, it will work because you're just asking for a simple output of take all the rows and give me the groups, okay? But now what you're saying, I have 15 rows and they're grouped by department number by adding department number here. You need to also tell what is the group by function, group by department number, <clears throat> okay? So, so, you can think of these as the group by functions. Anything not having group by function should go in the group by clause. See, this group by is very important in the select statement. Okay. So now if you look at this, what it did is, okay, let me also order by just to read it easily. I will do order by DEPTNO, meaning sorted by the department number, and it makes it easy for reading. So let's look at the first row. It tells you that it is department number 10, maximum salary is 5,000, minimum is 1,300. Average salary is whatever that 29,000, some 2916 uh, something. Total salary we pay to the department number 10 is 8,750. There are three salaries we pay and there are zero commissions we pay for department number 10. In the same way you can see here, department number 30 has all its entries and we pay four commissions and we pay uh, <clears throat> like a salary of six salaries, okay? So this is how you do the group by functions. Now, you are going to use, now, you for group by clause, you definitely need group by functions. So you need these two things go together, okay? And when you don't have any non-group function columns, you have to include them in your group by clause. And order by is just telling what is the sort order for the output. Okay, So these are some of the group functions. You can see here, these are the group functions. 
there are additional group functions like roll up cube and stuff like that which is which is a running totals and all that it is very powerful if you if you look at them what they can do is let's say for example you want a running total uh, let me explain what is a running total in financials in the row one uh, you are telling price okay and you can say running total <coughs> so let's say price is 10 and running total right now it will be 10 because that's how it started okay then you have 20 then your running total is 10 plus 20 30 and then you have let's say for example 40 your running total is 40 plus 30 is 70 okay so you can generate this running total using some special functions like say roll ups and cubes and stuff like that so look up for more functions these are some of the functions i explained but there are a lot more functions for doing uh, certain additional stuff like say more advanced stuff okay um so there is there is one more thing i want to introduce here okay what i want to show you is i want to pick pick only salaries which are less than four thousand dollars let's say maximum salary in that department should be less than four thousand dollars then only pick the output okay so you want to do some filtering okay now you cannot do a where class where max salary less than four thousand you cannot do this okay sorry salary bracket should be here and not there so you cannot do this because what happens here is um you cannot use a group by function within a where class that is the reason you cannot do this if you run this it is going to give an error saying group by function is not allowed here and it is telling you it is not allowed in this place but you can do the same thing if you are doing a having clause having and you don't use the where clause then okay so this whole thing goes like having condition goes with the group by clause so what you are saying here is now group by department number and pick only rows which are having maximum salary of 4000 or less okay you are saying anything less than 4000 just pick those rows now initially when you ran this same command without having clause you got four rows output meaning four departments but now if you see you got only two outputs for two departments because the maximum salary in these departments is less than given input of 4000 okay so that is the way you use having and remember that group by and having clauses go together if you don't have a group by clause you cannot write having and also having is how you will do the filtering of um, group by values okay so and and let's say for example you don't want to get 30 out department number 30 then you can use a where clause where department number not equal to 30 like that okay so then what you'll do when you write that it will avoid getting the department number 30 in the final output now here it is a general where clause where you're checking for some condition having is a special clause where you're checking for a group by function okay group function like max min average sum count and uh, you're counting uh, the number of salaries and also you can the way we counted commission says uh, we don't count the null values so that's how we did that okay so let me know if you have any questions but otherwise what we did here is we cover a lot of conversion functions group functions uh, <clears throat> we did a lot of interesting stuff with the functions and also we looked at uh, group by clause and having clause <laughs> there is there is one very interesting function called decode and i would like to introduce that at this time and what you can do with the decode function is it is it is a very interesting uh, functionality uh, let's see if we can use employee table for decode uh, just to bring that uh, clause here so decode is very powerful in the sense you can you can do some uh, very interesting uh, functionality okay we can use uh, salary column for that Okay, 
So let's say select, okay, <coughs> salary from EMP, okay. Uh, it's just a simple query for now. What it looks like is this. What you want to show is, okay, decode. Now, salary column is your input, okay. If salary is greater than five, greater than let's say 3000, okay. So your condition is like say greater than 3000. Then you want to show some output, okay. Probably this is not a good example because it, it will not be able to do this. I think this is wrong. Yeah, this is definitely wrong. Okay, let me let me think of some other example because this is definitely not useful for decode. Let's look at uh, okay. Let's let's pick uh, jobs. Job is a good example for this. Uh, I will show you multiple examples, so don't worry about it. Uh, I will make sure I will give you a couple of examples so you can understand what we are trying to do here. Okay, and you remember we we can do distinct. Uh, there is a distinct clause which will make uh, all these things like show up only once. Okay, now let's say there are two interesting jobs here. Uh, let's say manager and salesman are the two interesting jobs and I'm interested to show them in a, in a interesting way. Let's say for example, I will say e name. Okay. Now job, whatever is the job. Okay. Now what I will do with the decode function is first let me write this down and then I'll explain what I'm trying to do here. Okay. If job is clerk, uh, sorry, manager. Okay. What I want to show output is, wow, this is manager, okay? And I want to just say MGR, just to show you like that, okay? Now, if job is salesman, this is super sales guy, okay? Or guy or girl, so sales person. Let's do it that way. Okay. Now, if if at all this job, okay, let me also divide this into multiple lines so we can read this easily. And I want to explain how this goes. Okay. So the last one is mm, nothing interesting about this job. Okay. So let's look at the output and then I'll explain how the decode function works. Oh, that's strange. Oh, you know why? Uh, <clears throat> okay, remember uh, all the job. Um, okay, so let me explain what happened here and then we'll go look at the other thing. Okay, so what happens? First of all, what we are doing here is I'm decoding the job column. If at all job is equal to manager, then I want to show this output. If at all that job is equal to salesman, then I want to show this output. If at all job does not match with any of the manager and salesman, like none of these, then by default it will show this output. Okay. Now I was expecting different output for this column, but everything came out as nothing interesting because last option. Okay. Can anybody explain why that is happening? Any idea why that is happening? It is something to do with the job column. <coughs> okay, so it is not what you typed on the chat, but what I'll explain here is, remember uh, the EMP table, okay? Let me just do a describe EMP, EMP and you want to look at the description of the EMP table and we are especially talking about job column. You can see that it is a character data type, not a varchar data type. So 
after manager there are some more spaces inside that that job okay same thing with the salesman salesman is a eight characters but here we are specifying character nine that means there are spaces stored inside the job column and remember yesterday i was talking about trim so there is a l trim and r trim uh, functions and also later on uh, like you, if you run this now it will work okay now you are seeing different output now let me explain this trim thing so trim is go l trim r trim is left trim or uh, right trim it is going to remove any spaces within the job column okay so then it is able to match properly that's why this output is working later on uh, i mean old versions of oracle this will not work but later i think it is like um, 9 or 10 oracle introduced something called simple trim you don't have to do the left trim and right trim you just say trim and it will trim any spaces in front or the uh, after the uh, entry so so here we know that salesman has one more space manager has several spaces after that so now when you do a trim it is going to remove those spaces and then do the comparison so decode function now is working well so whenever you see a manager it says wow this is mgr uh, same thing with salesman it says this is super salesman okay but then there is any any other job even even if it is a president it says oh nothing interesting about this job because you know that you didn't put in the decode function so decode is uh, very useful now this might look like a very basic example i will show you a definitely i will show you a very powerful example for this uh, for now i want you to understand the basic use of decode and uh, later on uh, just now we'll we'll see one more example of a decode function let me know if you have any questions otherwise i will continue to show you another option of decode function okay so here what i will do right now is i'll just get rid of this whole thing okay um <clears throat> let me <coughs> let me show you um example let me see there is no example we can use so we'll create a new table okay so let's say create table um i will say for example create table um people or students students okay now what we'll do students name name of the student obviously s name uh, is a var care of 10 okay then we have student gender male or female so all you need is one character male female character one and then uh, here i'm using character one because i know that it is a fixed length it is always male or female it's just one character uh, m or f so that is easy and then what else we need is let's say for example i will say uh, you know what for now that's all i need okay so this is a simple table i'm creating and then I will say insert into students and I will say students s name s name value is uh, let's say um, my name and I am a male okay oops something ha happened I by mistake ran or something don't worry about it so that is the first thing and also here values keyword don't miss that okay so now let's make a copy of this and let's insert several rows okay so let's put some rows in there what we'll do here is let's say a second name is usha and female student now let's say for example ravi is a male student and uh, uh, let's say S H A R M A is another Sharma male student, and let's say Divya is a female student, and let's take one more. Um, let me just add two more. 
so mary is a female student and let's say last one is let's take uh, another girl let's say kt is also a female student okay so i just uh, so instead of running one command right now i'm going to run all these commands and i didn't explain commit yet but i'll just put a commit there just for uh, saving this permanently what i'll do is now i'll run this as a script so if i use this second button here on the on the um, sql developer it is going to run it as a script so what it did is it created the table and it inserted several rows and it committed the data now commit we haven't talked about don't worry about it we'll explain that later so what we'll do now is select star from students okay and i want to just see the data by running only one command you can see all those all that uh, rows came sorry so these these are the rows inserted into table you know what i want one more student i wanted uh, extra male or extra female but here we have exactly equal number so let's just drop table students you haven't uh, talked about drop yet uh, drop is just to remove the table uh, we create drop table and then we created the table we inserted some data commit and then selected so let me run it as a script again uh, okay before that i want to add one more female student here let's say um kate kate katy like that okay so now if i run this it uh, sorry if i run this it dropped and then selected all those rows so let me just select it back like this and now we have bunch of rows in there okay now this is this is an interesting challenge we used to do what we are going to do is we are going to count how many are males and how many are females in the in this table okay so and this is this is a very straight forward example let me just get rid of this output and what we are going to do here is challenge on hand is how do we count males and how many how many females are there so it is very easy right what you do is uh, select okay you are counting the gender so you will do gender and count of let's say star which are how many rows are there or you can do a count of gender okay from students students group by gender very easy right straight forward so now it is going to tell you males are 3 and females are five very easy stuff okay now the format of your output is male 3 and female 5 but let's say you want to convert this output into a see how this is a row column format i want to switch them and this is generally uh, called as cross tab report what they they want to do is they want to say male okay female as column names and the counts should be underneath like this okay see how the data is being converged so this is how the output is right now i want to show it this way okay now even though this is a very simple example i'm showing it is very useful let's say for example you have 6 months of sales and instead of showing months like this months and sale amount Okay, so this is another example where you will use this kind of stuff. Let's say Jan um, is thirty thousand. Okay, Jan, Feb, March, March, April. Okay, May. I'm going to show five months, and uh, the way you want to show the salary, I mean sales amount is twenty thousand. and then let's say this is a 34000 <coughs> and then here it is 42000 and let's say may again we dropped a little bit to 29000 but your output instead of showing it this way you want to show a report 
which says uh, which goes like months across like say jan um, feb okay let me do a feb march april may and then you want to show output like 30k um, 20k 34k and 42k and 29k okay so this is how your output should be so you see how we are transforming the rows uh, rows columns and they're switching them uh, from the rows to columns okay these are cross tab reports now what we can do for for our example here the simple male, <laughs> male female example i'm going to show you this way so here we are counting the males and females okay now output is this way but i want to show the output this way so i'm going to do this with decode try to try to follow um i mean you don't really have to understand it on the first try but if you watch it again and again with the explanation you will understand okay so first of all what is the output you need is male and female as your as your top column names okay so like column names here like gender this one okay so on the top so what you need to do is so first of all select from students so this is your table okay now what you want is you decode okay decode what is that you are checking is inside the table is gender okay if gender is male then show 1 otherwise show 0 okay this is your male calculation okay now if you use the exact same thing okay sorry i'm going to go back to our query if you use the same thing for female counts gender is female then count it as 1 otherwise count it as 0 and these are your females okay now if i run this generally if you generally run this you got a bitmap you can see wherever you what is a bitmap is you have a bit you say for example is this a male or female one for male is it's a male and female is zero obviously it is not female so same way when you have a female male value is zero female value is one and then you keep going like that okay but now your output is like a bitmap what if okay we also learned something called sum function right see here we are trying to use different functions and combine them and come up with outputs and also you see the heading here uh, i want you to notice the top portion which is like male and female okay we are running this report now we have decode function written nothing to do with inside decode but outside we are just specifying what is this column column output is male so for example when you're doing a month you will do a january february and so on okay so now you are going to count how many males and females are there instead of showing ones and zeros you want to get the total numbers so we also looked at something called sum function right so what it will do is it will add up all the values in that column okay so let me explain this before we run it so in this column if you sum this up 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4 zeros right total is 3 here but whereas if you add up this it will show you 5 okay because it will count how many add ups so when you do a sum it is going to show you output which looks like this so let me run this and see if you got the output properly now okay so male and female now what we did is we intelligently used our decode function to code them as one and zero first of all and then summarize that by using sum function sum is a group by function and then we basically got our output okay um this is this is one way to do your decode and sum and then combine all this now the the most important thing is you have to know which function is doing what and use them in a complicated way 
that way you can understand every single function and their functionality so this is how you use the decode function now this is not the only way you use decode function decode, decode function can be used in thousand ways um, as you get familiarized with it and you will come across situations where you want to use it it is very very powerful function uh, in oracle so right now at at this point we finished most of the inbuilt functions and we got introduced to most of it obviously this is not a complete list of all functions but there are lot more functions you can experiment with uh, you have to read documentation for that but for now we can continue with our uh, our exploration of oracle because now we have understanding of um, most of the functions uh, next thing we'll start looking at is constraints which is tomorrow so let's get back to this tomorrow and continue for now if you don't have any questions that's all for tonight uh, this is the end of the class today thank you